Your parent is getting older. One day, hopefully not too soon, they are going to pass away. And many of you want to help your parents to get their affairs in order. Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about everything you ever wanted to know about getting your affairs in order, including some things you have never thought of before. Hi there, I'm Sophia. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to be a more satisfied, more successful, and more informed family caregiver, then start now by hitting the subscribe button. So many of you want to help your parents get their affairs in order, but this is no small task. But by doing so, your parent is going to make it so much easier and less stressful for you later on down the road. Because when a crisis happens, you don't want to have to be thinking about all of these things and wondering what to do. You want to be able to focus on the needs of your parent. But what exactly does it mean to get your affairs in order? Well, it probably means different things to different people. And I'd say that most people say that their affairs are in order if they just do two or three of the recommended things. But in this video today, I'm going to talk about 16 things that need to be addressed if you want to fully have your affairs in order. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the more concrete things that you can do to plan for the end of someone's life. But if you have concerns about the more emotional things that you can do to plan, then I recommend that you watch this video about anticipatory grief. Today I'm going to start with the most common items and work my way down to those things that you just might not have thought of before. Some of these things will require that your parent is still mentally competent in order to put them in place. But many of these things on the list you can start to do right now even if your parent no longer has capacity. The list is long, but you don't even have to take notes today because I've made a comprehensive guide to getting your affairs in order, a printable form, and it's going to help make it so much easier for you. You just fill in the blanks and you're going to be feeling really organized. There's a link in the description and you don't even have to give your email address. It's a direct link and it's my gift to you. So let's get started. The first thing, if your parent has assets, then a final will and testament is necessary. This is going to give them the opportunity to say how they'd like their assets divided. This is going to help make things happen the way your parent wants um, without the relatives fighting amongst themselves. The will also allows for your parent to assign an executor of the estate, which is a person who's responsible to manage all of the affairs after a person dies. Number two, a trust account is going to help protect assets from probate, which is a court process in which a state is settled. The court will determine all of the assets and liabilities or bills that are due and will ensure that these are all paid before the remaining assets are divided to the heirs. By having assets in a trust account, they're protected from the probate process. Many people think that just having a will is enough, but a will does not protect from going through the probate process. In my mom's case, probate took about 18 to 24 months. I highly recommend that you seek the professional services of an estate attorney to help you with both getting a will and a trust in place. The next things to get in place are powers of attorney. There's two different kinds. A power of attorney for finances will allow your parent to assign a person to manage all of their financial affairs, including um, selling property, accessing the bank, um, and savings accounts, and paying bills. Again, your estate attorney can help you draft these or you can ask your bank for the appropriate forms. The second type of power of attorney is for health care. It allows your parent to assign a person to act as their proxy for medical decisions. Both of these powers of attorney go into effect when a person is still alive but unable to make their own decisions. They become null and void once a person has passed away. Next is the Advanced Health Care Directive. This is a legal form that will allow your parent to do two things. Assign a power of attorney for health care, which I just mentioned, and also to indicate what medical interventions they would or wouldn't want under certain circumstances. 
You can certainly ask your estate attorney to draft this form. However, it's not necessary and you can save a lot of money by helping your parent fill out the forms themselves. For information on advanced healthcare directives, watch this video here which will give you a step-by-step -step on how to complete the form. Now it's time to get organized. The next thing you need to do while trying to get your affairs in order is to write out all your parents' personal information all in one place. It needs to include their full legal name, their social security number, their date of birth, place of birth, and information about their marriages, current and past, places of marriages, and the dates and cities of divorces. You also want to get together any Veterans Administration ID information that might be applicable. This would include the branch of service, the dates of service, the date of discharge, and the location of the discharge papers. Next, you're going to want to write down all of the insurance information, Medicare ID numbers, Medicaid ID numbers, dental and eye health information. Again, if you download the planning guide, you can just fill in the blanks for all of these things. Mm -hmm. The next thing is to write down all the sources of income for your parent, whether that's Social Security, their retirement and pension, investments, VA pensions, alimony, or any other sources of income. Write it down in one place and total it up. Next, you're going to want to write down all of the financial account information. You want the names, account numbers, and phone numbers of all banking institutions. You're going to want to include your checking and savings account. And while you're at it, why don't you locate the checkbook and make sure that there's plenty of blank checks left. And if there's a safety deposit box, you're also going to want to include that information in this section. Next, you're going to list all debtors or anyone that your parent pays a bill to monthly, quarterly, or annually. Again, you're going to include the name, account number, and phone number, and the amount that is usually paid if that's available. If you come across accounts that haven't been used for a long time, it's time to close them now. And if there's any balances on these accounts, now's the time to try to pay them off. On this list of debtors, you're going to include all your credit cards, automobile loans, mortgages, or rent, um, all insur different kinds of insurance premiums, your utilities, property taxes, um, you know, and the miscellaneous bills like the alarm company and the gardener or the housekeeper. And don't forget all the senior services, the home care worker, um, home delivered meals, adult daycare, the assisted living, or the medical alert button. All of these things should be included on your list of debtors. Next, don't forget your memberships that your parent might be a member of and subscription services that they might have. Um, don't forget those things that auto renew every year like antivirus protection or subscriptions to magazines. Next, you're going to want to know the location of all important paperwork and documents, including social security card, health insurance cards, marriage and divorce um, paperwork, adoption or citizenship paperwork, the mortgage, automobile titles and registration, um, where is the will and the trust and the powers of attorney, uh, insurance policies, including long-term care insurance, health insurance, homeowner's insurance, life insurance. And while you're looking at the life insurance policies, make sure that the beneficiaries are updated. You're also going to want to know where any prepaid funeral arrangement paperwork might be located. The next section has to do with the location and knowledge of the keys and combinations to locks. So you want to be able to access the home, the safety deposit box, a lock box or safe that's located in the home. You know, if there's a locked garage or a shed or any locked rooms in the house, cars, storage units, all of these things should be written down the location where you can find these keys and combinations. In the next section, you're going to want to list out all important telephone numbers including your parents' doctors and medical specialists, the insurance companies, the estate attorney, financial advisor or a personal banker, um, a stockbroker, and church or religious contacts that are important to your parent. 
You're also going to want to write out all of the important telephone numbers for family members and close friends and relatives of your parent who should be contacted at the time your parent passes. The next section has to do with digital assets. These are all of your online account information, your usernames, your passwords. I recommend keeping a list of all of these, but that you keep the usernames and the passwords on two separate papers and in two separate locations just for personal safety. Go back and think about all the list of debtors and accounts and things that we talked about earlier. And if there is an online login for any of these, then include them on the sheet. Don't forget any social media accounts that your parent might have or that you might have started for them at some point in the past. And you might want to test out these login and passwords to make sure that they're still good and accurate and bookmark those pages to make it easier for you to access at some point in the future. You're going to want the username and passwords for the general computer login, email, bank accounts, um, all the debt accounts that you listed previously, retirement accounts, uh, Social Security, the VA website, any accounts that have been started for shopping, social media, subscriptions, and memberships. The next thing to include are prepaid funeral arrangements if your parent has done that. If they haven't, then maybe you can help find out what it is that they would like for their services and help them pre-plan that now so you don't have to do it later. Where I work currently in long-term care, there is no morgue. And when a patient passes away, the family has three hours to make a decision on the mortuary because the patient cannot stay there any longer than that. So instead of being stressed at the end, it's so much better to have these arrangements made ahead of time. And part of the pre-planning for a funeral is to see if your parent would be interested in having their guests donate to a particular cause or charity in lieu of flowers and document that. Another step in the pre-funeral planning is to see if your parent is interested in contributing to writing their obituary. I know that that might sound a little morbid, but some seniors would really love to do that. Even if it's just kind of a, an outline of things that they'd like included about their life, who their family members are, what are the significant things that they did in their life, the things that made them happy, and who they're leaving behind. Another part of getting your affairs in order is to think about how you want your care to be at the end of your life. There's a document called Five Wishes that is a terrific document that combines an advanced healthcare directive and power of attorney for health care as well as including information about how your parent would want things to be at the end of their life, such as who, where do they want to be, who do they want around them, you know, the music and the setting and how they want to be treated. And it also allows them to give some messages to family members. You can get the Five Wishes form for only $5 on the Five Wishes website. I'll go ahead and put a link below. The next thing that you could do is to see if your parent has a bucket list. What are the things that your parent would want to do while they're still here? And while they're still able to do it reasonably, are there places they want to go or people they want to see? If you're worried about the cost of fulfilling their bucket list, then watch this video on paying for senior care because no one says you can't use the money on bucket list items. The next thing is to help your parent come to some closure in their life with their relationships. Do they have people in their lives that they need to say something to? Maybe make apologies or make amends or to just reconnect? Maybe you could help them locate these people and maybe help them write a letter or make a phone call or even set up a Skype visit. The last thing that you wanna do is to inventory your parents' home. Of anything that is of a $100 value or more, just go through room by room and write the things down. And if your parent feels strongly that they'd like to give those items to certain people in the family, maybe they can jot the names down next to it. Once you get all 16 of these things done, you're gonna to wanna to store all this information in a safe place or with a trusted person. 
there is a highly secure online company that allows you to scan all this financial, legal, health, and personal account information so that they're safe and available down the road when they're needed. It's called Everplans, and I'll put a link below. Don't forget to print out the comprehensive guide to getting your affairs in order. Everything that I talked about is on there. Each section has a page of its own. You just fill in the blanks. If you and your parent get just half of these things in place, you're going to feel so much relief. But if you want to be the champion of getting your affairs in order, then try to tackle all of them. If you found this information helpful, then please go ahead and hit the like button. And if you don't want to miss any new videos on everything senior, then please subscribe and hit the notification bell because I release new videos every Tuesday and you're not going to want to miss out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.